talking about, and I can't even find it in the, I mean, I'm looking on Colt, but you don't have it set on Colt, so I can't even find the generic SEO in here to do it with, but we're talking plugins like Yoast or uh, all-in-one SEO where it's a checkbox that says, add this keyword or add this stuff to your post. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. Well, we do have all-in-one SEO on the, uh, on Colt. That's what we use. <laughs> Much to Andre's chagrin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, yeah. The, the titles are changeable in Yoast under under your titles and meta. Yeah, it's it's very easy to do. I mean, it's if you go into your uh, yeah, on, um, I'm just going to my own site here. You guys who want to learn, log into WordPress and go into your dashboard, and Andre is going to walk you through how to disable repeating titles. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, because I never even used that stuff, so I. It'd be, somebody else would be better off showing them where to uncheck this stuff. Yeah, you know, it just defaults to repeating titles, even on a free WordPress template. And so, you know, a reasonably trained webmaster is going to know to go in there and uncheck those boxes. That's all. It's easy. Yeah. I'm looking in, I'm looking in your all-in-one, and here's the thing. I've never used this one before, uh, Mike, so it looks to me like it's checked for your site, but it's probably not because I can't see where you tell it not to do this. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Let me let me go in there and take a look, and I'll tell you my. <laughs> Sorry, my if I used it before, I'd be faster at it. But I'm just like, eh. it's all right. So um, here's what I'll do. Okay, tell me when you're ready because I've got my Yoast WordPress SEO open. Okay, and I have all-in-one SEO open. So <laughs> you know, this is kind of cool because Andre, we can go. Back and forth. I can, you know what I mean. Like I can show all in one, or you can show Yoast, <laughs> yeah. so everybody kind of knows. I've got till nine today, guys. I've got a nine thirty consult, so I'll pipe in where I can, and then I'm gonna have to check out. All right. So you can see, I have the all in one SEO up for display right now. See the mouse spinning around there, guys. Yep. Okay. If you look at post title format. Normally, right after that, there is a string that says repeat or title, whatever. Right. I've deleted all that stuff, so the title never gets repeated in any of these bylines. So anybody who has an all-in-one SEO plugin, contact me later, and we can, we can go over it on your site. Oh, but anyways, okay. for Yoast, which is the one that Andre is going to want you guys all to use, <laughs> and I prefer it as well. Yeah, and most people will. I just I have some of this left over from the old days. Um, <laughs> Yoast, is, Yoast is the one you guys are going to want to use most definitely. And, this is what it. This is what it looks like if you look at my screen. Um, the, what Mark was saying is that he cleaned his up. That's exactly what it looks like when it's not cleaned up. If you look at my screen, so you've got your title, your page, your separator, and it's your site. And, yeah, so that you want to literally highlight. Now that's default because um, right. there's no, that's how they put it. It's just that's the way it is. So you want to delete that and you just want to have your title. So your, as, as John puts it, your compelling title will just go in there instead of your compelling title plus your site name plus your category, et cetera, et cetera. The same goes for your pages. You want to do that. You want to take that out just to have title. Uh, okay, media is not not relevant here, and then you just save your settings. That's that's it. That was that I did under post types. Uh, your taxonomies will be the same, although these should obviously be no index and follow. Those are your tags, your categories, and that sort of thing. Even as Mike doesn't like to use tags, some people do. As long as you know follow it, uh, that's the most important. Then you also want to clean that up. Take out your archives. Take out your you know the stuff that you don't need. You just want you just want the title. That's all you want. Whether yep. it be page, post, uh, picture, whatever, just your title. And it's as easy as that. That's it. Done. So you that's your. You override the settings, the 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 permalink settings. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's not that's not your permalink. This is your title. Yeah. Your permalink is something else. Permalink is your URL. This is your title. Now, your permalink is done over here um, in your settings under WordPress. That's your, 
That's just your URL. It's got nothing to do with your title. Yeah. And I haven't so, seen anybody that's not using pretty permalinks so far, so that's a good thing. What, on the Internet? Or, well, yeah. any of the lawyers. I haven't seen any lawyer uh, that I've clicked through where I'm looking at ugly uh, URLs, so everybody yeah. seems to have that set. I haven't correct. seen any lawyer that I've clicked through where I'm looking at ugly uh, URL, so everybody yeah. seems to have that set of friends. I haven't seen any more. I clicked through where I'm looking at ugly uh, URL, so everybody yeah. seems to have that set of friends. Somebody's on a loop. Sorry, I, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Okay. Also, if you while we're on Yoast, if you go to the, they've got another another setting here called permalinks under under Yoast, which is actually very good because you can. Strip your category out of your URL, so you shorten your URL, which is a good thing. Um, you can do what Mike likes to do, except he likes to have seven plugins to do what Yoast does in one. Well, no, so, I, I'm with Andre now, guys. I mean, I, I, he's, he's very got Mark, a better plan here. Andre's, I, uh, the Yoast thing was way better. It is. Um, this is also quite important. You redirect your attachment URL to your parent posted URL because a lot of people will put an image into their post and then when you click on the image, it opens the image in its own URL, which is stupid. Because often, oftentimes there's no, I don't want to get too complicated, there's no index file inside your uploads so people can access all of your images just by cutting off the, the image name. I know it may not make sense, but that's why I say just do do you do that so that you don't get people clicking through to your directories, rather than clicking onto the onto the post? <laughs> Andre, um, yeah. Real quick, it's interesting that you mentioned that under the guise of security, because while that is totally important, one of the other reasons to set it differently is if you don't have Lightbox or some kind of a uh, an element for that image, when they click on it, they end up with a second page that's just the image, and that looks crappy too. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, you know, and another thing, I don't know if you guys use this, but uh, HD Access Control, maybe even, well, Yoast does this, but HD Access Control will actually add those index files to the right places in your WordPress so that you don't have to worry about that security risk. Yeah, that's if you, that's if you do it properly in the HD Access. Well, no, it's a plugin, HD Access Control. Oh, okay. That takes care of all of that. And I know we're not going to security, but I just wanted to say there's a really easy way for those guys to prevent that to happen with a few clicks of a button. Yeah. The uh, Yoast also does another pl a plugin called Robots Meta, and I don't know why he didn't include it with his uh, his SEO plugin, which gives you direct access to that uh, to the HD access as well. Excellent. But it, it is important. Um, there's no doubt about it. Okay. Then so, also, so Andre, which you just you're just checking. Strip category and redirect. Attack. No, and also you want to remove the question mark reply to com variables because that can also be a security issue where people try and figure out what database and everything that you've got and they try and basically fish into your website or hack into your website, which is one of the one of the mechanisms that they use. So yeah, which which has happened to me several times with the free WordPress templates, yeah. right? And then, obviously, the redirect ugly URLs to clean perma permalinks that you've already done in that permalink settings of your WordPress. So you will just save your save your settings on that. Hey, can anyone hear me? Hi, yeah. Dave. What's up, Dave? Finally, I've been trying to talk for the last 20 minutes. No one can hear. <laughs> I think your microphone only comes on at 10 past. <laughs> <laughs> It's like okay. a tree. If a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, did someone say something? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, okay, just to, if you want to, you know, like a lot of you guys, Jonathan, you've mentioned it before, Michael, you've mentioned it before. People are scraping your sites from an RSS basis or going in physically and taking content out. Now, the majority of people that do scrape sites do so on a lazy basis. They do so via RSS feeds. Okay. You know, if, they'd, if they're too lazy to write an article, I can promise you they're too lazy to go and copy and paste the content from your site. So in this instance, they've got the RSS feed here under um, SEO, and you can go and put here, just to stop or put people off, is go and put in your, your 
like your blog link where it was originally originally posted. So at, to put before the post in the feed, you can just actually put this. Uh, this was originally posted at, and then you just put a blog link in there. Hmm. That type of thing. Now there's two benefits from that. In that, the, the guy's going to see that he's not getting the benefit out of it, and he's going to realize that this is not easy pickings. And um, you'll get the, you'll get the top link at the uh, on the page, which may not necessarily be a great link, but it won't be a bad link either because Google would recognize it as a scraper site um, that's scraping your content and attribute the the authority to you in the in the first place. So. I think that's about it with the WordPress. Uh, no, no, sorry. There's one more thing: is the internal links, which gives you the option to do your breadcrumbs. Does everybody know what breadcrumbs are? No. Okay. A breadcrumb is if you go onto a page, um, it tells you <laughs> basically where you are. So let's go to uh, the contact page, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Now. I know that I'm on the contact page, but if I do enable breadcrumbs, I can actually you get like a little sort of um, footprint as to where you are. Uh, your anchor text for your home page, in this instance, I'm going to put Andre van Weyck. Um If I want to put prefixes or whatever, I don't. I don't want to do that. If I want to remove the blog from the the blog page from breadcrumbs, yes, and. That would basically be it. Now, if I refresh here, I should have a little breadcrumb over here, which shows me a path of where I am. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So just do a refresh. Okay. Now it won't it won't work when you when everybody else is watching. You know what it's like. Of course. Uh, it's probably caching. <laughs> the, the, those things. Um, are the thing to be weary of is they can mess up your design. So when you implement them, just make sure it doesn't screw with anything else going on, because those are just automatically injected into different places in WordPress. Yeah, that, that, it depends on the theme. That is important to take into account. Um, let me just find a example that actually works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, here we go. This is live, you know. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Slovakian South Africans are not so fast in the in the brain department. Can you see at the, Can you see at the top here? This is a this is a breadcrumb here. This uh, this over here that I've highlighted. Yeah. So that gives you the chance, as well as the anchor text, which is referring back to your back to your home page. So you'll want to obviously use. The, the right anchor text of what you're wanting to to sort of rank for, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and on a big, I mean, you're talking about it from an SEO factor, but really, breadcrumbs are a UI factor. They're a help for your end users. Yeah, but they both. They they. Yeah. If yeah. You, you can use it incorrectly, John. You could put your um, a long thing saying Chicago personal injury lawyer. <laughs> Down or something, you know, that's going to compete against your own site. So you've got to take it from a, from both a UI and a and, and an SEO uh, perspective. Uh, Andre, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. I noticed that what you pointed to it's it's basically almost identical to what I see going on with Robert Reeves, where he has Los Angeles County, Los Angeles City, uh, and then it says return to personal injury page. And it's at the very top left, just like that, with the same arrows and everything. Is that what he's using? Is, and is that why it looks like it's part of the style sheet as opposed to give me a, part of the Give post? me a URL that I can have a look at. Um, go back on there. Go, go to Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. any, any kind of Los Angeles personal injury, click on that. What, Los Angeles, Lancaster? Yeah, anything. Okay. That's at the top here you're talking about. Yeah, at the top of the post, there should be like a thing pointing with arrows that says like Los Angeles City, Los Angeles County. Yeah. That that day that I've highlighted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's breadcrumbs. Ah, that's what I need. That's what I've been trying to tell you <laughs> when I've been sending examples. <laughs> that's that's breadcrumbs. That's, that's what I mean. you need. That's what you need, but you want me to use all in one SEO. 
No, I don't. I want you to use. <laughs> I want you to use whatever it's going to take to make me have the same capabilities as that site. Isn't that beautiful, guys? What he's got going on there. That guy ranks for everything. Can we go back to it, Andre? Stop talking for a second, Mike, so okay. we can go see. That's there. Well, you see, basically, you what it's showing you is that that's his, that's his home page. That over there. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. It's okay. showing you that you one, two, three levels deep into his site. So if you get lost, that's why John says it's it's important from a UI perspective. You know, okay, I know that I'm here, but I wanted to go back to meeting locations, and then it goes back there. You see, but it has some sort of link value too, because there's a there's an HTML link yep. to that page, and that then points to that page. So Amen. you want to you don't want to spam it. You don't want to have personal injury lawyers, personal injury lawyer meeting locations. Personal injury lawyer Lancaster, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because then you're just gonna you're gonna be shooting yourself in the foot. I've seen people do that. Yeah. So, you guys, know, so look at look at what I did here on this site. I tried to do it just by using my HTML code because I didn't know it was breadcrumbs. You see where <laughs> I highlighted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dave, I tried to do it that, but I don't want that. I want to do it the right way with breadcrumbs. Yeah, and I've been, I've, sorry, John, I've been deleting them all the time. So if you find that they're not there, Mike, it's because I'm going through deleting them. <laughs> this section right here, you're also deleting. This is like I have a Los Angeles County. I have other locations, Los Angeles City. Trying to set it up just like his site, you see? Okay, so we, sorry, we're working against each other because when I come across those, I take them out. No, that's okay. Take them out. Just restore it with breadcrumbs so it emulates that example. Yeah, I don't, I don't want it to show, but I don't want it to show twice. Like, you know, the 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 issue that we had with the duplicate titles. Yeah, that's taking those out first so that I can put the breadcrumbs in. But I don't yeah. want double breadcrumbs. Okay. All right, guys. That's something I wanted to show everybody. I learned something today too. Goody. Okay, so can we have an article for the Circle of Legal of legal Trust from you, please? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you can do that with jQuery breadcrumbs plugin as well. You don't have to dump your all-in-one if you want. Hey, Steve, I'd, Mark, rather, just, I'd rather use Yoast. Mark, I like yeah, it. Yeah, but Mark, your site is so dependent and so customized with thousands of pages that have been manually done on, on, um, on, on all-in-one. I don't want to... Just suddenly convert without doing it properly. That's fine. Right? All right, that's fine. Move on. Move on. Let's teach these guys something. Okay. Matt has that on our site as well. For instance, down if you see me consistently. Yeah, only now because <laughs> the not work. Um, okay. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Mike, are you planning to create a community for Cole using the new community module on Plus? I think uh, we have already. Oh, no, wait, the community module. You're right. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, I started one for the executive board, but I think we should also do one for the uh, members, too. Oh, yeah. It'll save a lot of. Because I've got a, I've got two circles. I got a cult circle, and then I just have a, a, a legal circle. But legal's a lot more than than just the cult guys. If there were a community just cult, then it's all cult, no extraneous crap. The problem okay. with the problem with the community is not available to the public, and you don't get the benefits for SEO purposes. It's more of like an ex I think it's more of like an executive session where people can discuss things off the record that they don't necessarily want the public to see or get SEO benefit from. Well, is we have the like forum that's set up for that, which is completely even off Google's radar. Community Isn't the community not searchable? I, I, I don't know I I'm, I don't I think so because I, I posed that question on Trafficking's thread earlier this morning. I bet I got 50 invites to communities. It was a real pain in the ass. Yeah. I said I'm wondering how what uh, structured data, what rich snippet is going to show up in the SERPs if organic picks it up. I don't think it does because when I tried to, in other words, I was posting in the community and I tried to plus. 
somebody that says this person is not part of the community will not be receiving this. I think you have to be invited in order. Yeah, to no, you've got to be. You've got to be in the group. But let me let me just find this because uh, this guy. Uh, so the, the bottom line is we're going to set it up. And we'll try it out and test it. How's that sound? Yeah, he's Linden. Linden N A. He he put out the Google Communities Guide this morning at uh, six twenty five my time. Smart guy. Can you send me some info on it, please, Neil? Like email me. Well, I just drop in the the uh, what you call it here. Right? All right. <laughs> I mean, very basic level. It's got to count all of your activity for authorship. So I see no reason why it wouldn't at least count for that. I mean, they they wouldn't integrate something like communities without giving it some SEO value. But, yeah, that's probably true. But it says so, that you have to only by invitation. I mean, that's what it's obviously only for people that you invite. To, yeah, like, so, actually is, see it. so is LinkedIn and other sites, but they still count the authorship signals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and it, you could it can be. I I thought there was a way that you could just make it an open community and people could request to join. But I haven't see, done much besides. Yeah, separate. yeah. Because it asks you. It says, "Is this public, or do they need to?" Um, right. Yeah, we'll make it public. Right. <laughs> so, you guys, let's get back on topic, though, with these with these widgets um, and H cards, because that's something that you know, for you guys who don't have or use or understand schema, you know, as a stopgap, we could show you today how to install an H card in your widgets and at least get some juice uh, with Google Places, soon to be. Only Google Plus Pages. Does everybody know that as well? That <laughs> Google Places is going under at the end of uh, January here, beginning of January. Yeah. And they may change the name again. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, really? What? <laughs> well, what we had Google Plus Pages, listings. They've had like 90 names for the same thing. Oh, wow. Google I mean, like Local. Pages. But anyways, Andre was going to go through widgets, which... John, if you're logged in on yeah. WordPress and, and Rosenfeld as well, and anyone yeah. else who wants to learn, like Alexander, um, he's going to go in. Like he's going to show you where the widget is on the style sheet, where it is in your dashboard, how to find it, how to populate it, and how to set up an H card. So go for it anytime you're ready, Andre. Okay, what are we going to start with? With the uh, with the H cards or the scale? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. H cards is probably the easiest one because it shows them how to use the widgets. Okay, let me just share my screen here. When you start with the beginning of what an H card is. Okay, an H card is uh, basically it's a markup of computer language that the that the search engines can read that says that this site belongs to the uh, Jonathan Rosenfeld. That's his first name. That's his second name. That's his family name. This is what he does. Um, whatever you want to put in there. His phone number, his email address, his URL. Uh, if you want to put a photo there, etc. You with me? Yeah. Okay. Now, although it sounds a little bit complicated, and why would you want to do this? Is because. If you just do it in plain text, uh, such as, let's just use this example here. Um, you know, I put in my name here, Andre van Veik, van Veik, and my address, 1234 Street Road, whatever, Slovakia. And my telephone number is 541 Okay. Now, that looks fine to both you and I or whoever, you know, from a human perspective. A search engine comes along and it just it sees a whole lot of text and it says, okay, that's text, and it just puts it there. Whereas if you go in here and you do something like something like this, um, I'm not gonna go too much too in depth into it, but Street Road, and 
basically that has now given me a whole lot of information that the as compared to this, give me a second, let me just find my mouse. Um, that's currently how normal people or everybody's got their address details, whereas if you put something that looks like that, it may look complicated, but now the search engine actually understands what it's reading. It doesn't say it's just a bunch of text. So now this H card is, is um, what you would compare to something like Google Rich Snippets. Do you understand? Where it pulls up your photo next to your authorship and that sort of thing. It's the same sort of concept, except that an H card is what they call microformats, whereas what Google uses predominantly is called schema or micro microdata, which is basically it's essentially the same thing. It's just two different organizations. It's like Rosenfeld Injury Lawyers and Eline Injury Lawyers. You know what I mean? They do the same things, but they just they operate slightly differently. So now the value of getting a an H card or using schema, which I'll go through just now, is basically displayed in your either your rich snippets testing tool, or if you have a look at let's use Robert Reeves again as a as a example in search. Um, Robert Reeves Law. Now if you have a look at What's up, Barry Schwartz? Now it's true as nuts, it's not working. Hang on a sec. Let's use Michael Elon as a... Is that Barry from Storage Wars? Yeah, it looks like it. How the hell did he get in this thing out? Looks like you got a new uh, shirt from a locker. Can somebody please? <laughs> can somebody please uh, buy Castelli one in some of those really thick, dark rimmed glasses that Weiss wears and send them to him? <laughs> we just can. Uh, sorry, John. No, if no. you look now, I just typed in Michael Elon into Google. Now, if you have a look, that little photo of Michael Elon underneath the. Underneath on the on the normal SERPs, that's part of rich snippets, which is part of H card and part of schema. Okay. But now if you look on the right, that's even more stuff that is coming from schema and from rich snippets and that sort of thing. So effectively you're looking above the fold, I can see Michael Elon here at the top, I can see Michael Elon's personal blog, I can see Michael Elon Google Plus. And I can see his business on the right hand side here. Yeah? Directions to his business, his reviews, everything like that. See all his office hours, etc. So he's he's basically taken over the entire above the fault. You understand? And now that's that's through the use of a combination of open graph, uh, schema, H cards, and that sort of thing. Quick question. Yeah. That H card creator, was that is that a, a plug in? And uh, H, H card creator is is external. That's available. I'll put it in the in the um, chat box here. Sweet. You can just That's Google it too. I mean, it's it's the first thing that pops up. Yeah. Andre, is this something you put in all your websites, like you put in mine, for instance, or is it only in some? No, I put it in all. Okay. But it does it does take some time to get. Um, to, to sometimes get called by, by Google. So, you know, it's not something that you put in and it automatically happens. You put it in and you leave it in. That's it. And don't worry about it from there. It's I mean, I, I know for a fact a couple of weeks ago, if you did a search for Michael Elon on the internet, you didn't get this result that you're seeing here. Am I wrong if I say that, Mike? You know, I think that you putting in the schema made a big difference. Like, a, I'd say it. Probably a twenty percent difference. That's how impressive the schema is, and, and H card is part of the schema, guys. Yeah, so it's just that, a, it's, where do you and you put that HTML code in between head and body? Yeah, within your body. Either I cannot just to get to to take a step back. Sorry, Neil. He's going to put uh, it in a widget, Neil. Yeah, you, the the problem with with um, Google Plus is that when you put in 
uh, schema, which is not uh, the H card that we're talking about. Google Plus is designed by default to pull your schema details before anything else. So it overrides your post titles and everything. Unless, of, unless you install a plugin called Schema Creator from uh, Raven Tools. Yeah. Ah. So schema, schema is the way forward. Uh, a lot of people might say that HCard, they, it's on its way out. It's still used, but um, there is basically the the answer is is that if you're on WordPress, you use Schema Creator from Raven Tools, and that does it perfectly for you. And it's so easy, you've actually got no idea. And you guys, really quick, let me interject. If you if you do a what they used to call a guest blog, or if you have a blog post that's on your own blog, um, you know, the H card is always going to work. It's always going to be a great addition for you as well as your Google Plus link. Putting that H card in uh, is a really great way to get a citation for your local yep. listing. It'll drive that local listing higher in search if you embed H cards in all of your posts and articles. Hmm. Yeah. Now, if you I, I would run through this uh, the schema creator with you, but it's um, I think Tony is the only person that's that's not really on WordPress at this time. Is that correct, uh, Andre? Uh, on two on my main main website, uh, my blog is a WordPress blog, and then on another website, I do have WordPress also. But it's it's not a uh, my sites are not uh, WordPress. Uh, based. Yeah, yeah. I know your main site. Well, my, my one, I have one that is. I'm sorry. Uh, CarAccidentAttorneys.us. That's WordPress. But okay. uh, I do have a WordPress blog. Blog Castelli Law. So. Yeah, and your main site. Your main site is Drupal. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. In, in the uh, subdomain Blog Castelli Law. There, that's a WordPress. Uh, actually, though, I believe. I'm not a hundred percent sure on Drupal, so I'm not not even going to talk about that. But um, when when it comes to WordPress, the only the only plugin that you're going to need is basically your Schema Creator, which is uh, a free, obviously a free plugin. That's by Raven Tools, which is um, they're very good with their marketing tools and that sort of thing. Um, and it's it's all very simple. I mean, it's. You install it. You tick whatever you want to exclude your default CSS. You don't want to do that. Um, you apply your item prop and item uh, type for your main body tag, and as well as for your content wrapper. Now, the reason why you do that is because then it identifies your site, and it doesn't do what schema normally does in pulling your schema information from your NAP details first. So it'll rather pull the the, the title details. I know it's a bit complicated, but um, just ignore that. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Rather, just tick those two when you once you put them in, and then um, when you're doing a post or a, if you want to to create a schema, can you see here next? Let me just zoom in there. But there's a little SC here, which is your schema creator next to your media button. You just press that, and it's it's simple. There it is. Person, product, event, organization. Movie review recipe. So I'm doing a review from Mark Elon gave me a review. So actually, no, this is the person who's doing the review is the author, which is that one, Michael Elon. Um, the published date would be today, which is the seventh. The review rating is five. The minimum is one. The maximum is five. And the person being reviewed, or let's say the product being reviewed, is SEO. Um, the website is http underconvey.com. You mean that's where the review originally was posted? Is that or that's where the review is supposed to go on? This is great for. This is where it will go on, and this is great for the attorneys that haven't got that have got written reviews on file. So you've got a you've got a proof of the review which you can just add like this, but you also don't want to go overboard because you know it may just flag something that may it may just not look natural. So you've got to just try and keep it as natural as possible. So the description of the service here was uh, 
you don't have to even put all of this in, in here. Website SEO. The item name was SEO. Sorry, that, that is the service that's being done. Somebody's typing. Sorry, it's me. I apologize. It's okay. Just press the mute button if you want to follow along. That way it won't keep changing the screen. No biggie. Uh, Andre provided SEO services Who's running a YouTube and morning, Dan? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay, so there's your schema review. That's just basically you put that in, and it's already all done for you. Okay, which can either be in a post or you can put it in a widget. For this instance, I went into a post to create the schema, so I'll go to widgets. Um, I've already copied and I've copied that. I hope. Primary sidebar. I'm going to just put in a text. Uh, a text one there. Control V. There's my schema. Put it in there and then. Let's just see what it looks like on the site. And in the meantime, we go to Webmaster Tools. Yeah, before you go show this, I just want to interject something that um, actually it's something I kind of recently learned that I was surprised. No matter what you guys do, the the snippet, the showing of the snippet is not guaranteed. It's search dependent or query dependent. So yeah. you, you can look to your blue in the face, and Google says this even about your your metadata, that you're not guaranteed to get that metadata shown, even if you tell Google, please show this, because it is query dependent. And I, I, I did some tests with this the other day. With If you take a URL of a blog post and drop it into search, you won't get the SEO meta for that. If you do a search query term and pull it up, you will. So for all of this snippet data, the schema and everything, when you guys have it installed, don't freak out if you go to test it and you don't see the right stuff. Just make sure it's connected correctly. So, you know, there's no guarantee you're going to see what you wanted to see every time you look. Yeah. Now, that's important to understand. But, you know, it doesn't hurt your site by adding schemas and that sort of thing to it. No. Um, you, you do your, your site more, more benefit than you would harm. Because the more that you cater for both the, the both the search engines as well as the user interface and the user interaction, the better your site's going to do. Because ultimately, as previously mentioned, um, Google's after the the, the uh, user experience. But the, the the easier you can make it for Google to understand what your site is and what what the content is and what belongs where, the more favors you're doing for yourself and your site. The easiest way to think of all of this is you do things on the front end for your viewers, and you do all this other stuff in the back end for bots, spiders, and, and search engines. Yeah. Hey, Andre, can you just show something? Uh, when Mike was talking about doing a guest post, uh, getting our schema like embedded in the guest post, the okay, H card what? or the H card, excuse me. Yeah. Just yeah, put it at the bottom of the post where you normally would, you know, like contact Jonathan Rosenfeld here and. Bam! Paste it right there. Wait, do you so you don't link to it? You, I'm confused. You do you actually link to the the H card in your site, or do you actually embed it in the guest post? You embed it in the guest post. Okay. Okay. So you would go to H card creator and you put in your um, or schema creator, whatever as, as the person or an organization you'd actually rather do because uh, obviously you're representing your. Your um, oh okay, is and it generates the the uh, the HTML on the side. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean you can do it. Uh, you can do it either with that schema creator. You just install schema creator on one of your your sites just uh -huh. to use for generating the code. You go to add a new post. You generate the code. You copy that to a text document, and then you just go out of that post. You know what I mean? That's so a great idea. Yeah, you've got that. Then you've got what they call like a swipe file that you can just every time you send an article out, you just paste that onto the bottom, type of thing. Thank you. 
Yeah, so that's, I think that, I mean, this is what it looks like when it's been implemented correctly. If you have a look at Elon's, uh, you see the ratings are showing as well as the authorship is showing. So that's the, well, it's as, as John says, that's not guaranteed, but that's what it would look, that's what it would look like in certain circumstances and, and certain queries. And keep and that screen up because tell, Homeboy has a problem, uh, Alexander, uh, he needs to see that link because he says that all of their listings, they lost all that. So maybe they've got a broken link or a broken code that's keeping that from appearing properly. Um, now he can on, test it. On which site, Alex? Lamontes, can you hear us now? I think he's on the phone. Ah, too bad, because this is an issue. If you look, if you, if you scroll up on the group chat, he's saying, uh, you know, William's going bananas uh, because the rich snippets no longer displaying and that's the tool that, that you guys can all use to see if your rich snippets are actually working properly on Google. Sorry to interrupt Andre, I just wanted, I wanted Alexander to see that. Yeah, you see it's not showing. That's because he's got an ever linked profile there. Okay, so William Hurst's snippet uh, has a, there's something wrong with his snippet data, correct? Yeah. No, there's something wrong with his linked uh, author profile. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to change that that ever. He needs to take that ever linked uh, profile out and replace it with. Um, okay, Alexander, can you hear us? I think you he can hear us. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can. I'm just... sorry. I've had a client call. It's okay. We just discovered what your problem is with your website. Go ahead, yeah, Andre. Okay. Uh, Alex, there's your, your rich snippet showing bullhurst.com, okay? Now, your, yeah. linked author, your linked author profile is linked to an Evo. It can be linked to whatever you want to, but you're actually missing your, your Google+. Plus. That's why it's not showing a, a, a rich snippet there. So, oh, okay. <laughs> show so, my site to show them what it's supposed to look like. Hey, Bill, they're talking about it right now if you want to come in my office. Show, yeah, show them what the E-Line site looks like, and that way they'll get a baseline of how it should be appearing when they use the Rich Snippets tool. And everybody follow along. This is important because this is how you can test right away whether or not your Rich Snippet code is installed properly, like you've installed your Google profile properly on your blog, your site. Yeah. But just to, just to bring up John's, John's earlier mention, just bear in mind that it's not guaranteed. You must keep that in mind. It's, this is just an indication of whether the right things are in the right place or not. Well, and, let, and let's clarify that. Just because it's not seen doesn't mean the schema information and the connectivity isn't providing value. Mm -hmm. So there's value yeah. in the SEO end with the nuts and bolts of this and the mechanics, and there's value on the user end of seeing the results. So no matter yeah. what you do, it still has value, so don't think it's a waste of time. And the tool, Andre, correct me if I'm wrong, will tell you whether or not everything is set up properly. What tool? This tool that I'm looking at? Yes. Yeah, it's your, rich, uh, it's your structured data testing tool. If you go into Google and you go to your Webmaster Tools account, everyone should have a Webmaster Tools account. I mean, it's Google, so... Well, we'll, we'll, we'll we, I'm going to do another call where we discuss how to look at your analytics and webmaster tools and why. But yeah. That another we'll do, a post. do a post for us as yeah. well. You go to other resources at the bottom over here, and then you'd go to your rich snippet testing tool, which then goes to your structured data testing tool. There's another, there's another link, but you, if you use it through your, uh, your webmaster tools, it's fine. It, it basically tells you what you need to do. Um, shift home, delete. That's uh, Bill Hurst's uh, author profile, which you need to put into your header, Alex, like this, just like I'm typing it in the side box here. Role equals author. If you copy and paste that, uh, put it into your profile in the WordPress, um, the WordPress site. For instance, uh, let's go here. Users, um, sorry, Mike. I'm using your site as an example. Thanks for the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
we're, we're all sorry you're using it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you basically, you can put it in your biographical uh, information. You can put it in your header. It depends how your theme is set up, everything like that. Um, you know, here I've got Mike's. We've got Mike's link, real author here in the header that's been put into the header. So that you need to set up on your on your site, Alex. For, um, you know, for Bill. Once that it once that has been done, it should look something like what we did for for Elon here. Uh, you see that linked author profile, verified Google profile, author name. Okay, there it's coming up again. It doesn't matter how many times it comes up, but and right now, be, right now when we test bills, it shows up that it's not verified. The her no. site is not verified. Well, it's not even on the on the site. It's a, it doesn't show anywhere on the site. You see, linked profile shows as AVO, the AVVO public. Um, Profile, not your not your Google profile, which is right. that one that I put in the sidebar. Andre, can you kill SEM Rush? Just deactivate it for a second, so I can. I'm getting confused with what that plugin's generating. Oh yeah. What do you mean? Just deactivate Rush for a minute. Just fix it. This you have that browser tool showing all the extra stuff that you can see on uh, Andre. All the other the analysis tools. I don't even know how to switch it off, to be honest. <laughs> it's somewhere in your browser. <laughs> Just top right, right mouse click. You have it's, the mouse bar. It's okay. It's okay. But I bet you those other guys, I bet you some of these other guys are wondering what the hell is that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's fun. Let them be, it's to keep their, <laughs> keep their curiosity so I can charge them for an hour's worth of consulting. <laughs> <laughs> If you want your results to have that many colorful buttons, talk to Andre. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, good night. Just hold, hold, hold it first. All right, so that's. I, I see. You should point out what we're looking at there. Yeah, we're looking down here. This is where we're looking. Now, we can't see. If we go back to Elon's, if we go back to um, www.elonlaw.com, now, uh, perhaps maybe we should open this into another window next to it. Hang on a second. <coughs> yeah, it's this. small too. If you could zoom it in a bit, that would be awesome, Andre. Yeah, I will do now. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to compare side by side here. Okay, that's Bill Hurst. Okay, on the right hand side here. Now we're going to do E line on the on the left. It may be the other way for you. I'm not sure. Okay, ignore all these drop down boxes and pretty buttons and everything. We're looking at what we would normally see. What the hell, Elon Law? Sorry, that's somebody who stole my last name and created a bicycle company. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Although you could expand, Eli Law and Bicycles. Well, you know, they just did Eline.com, but luckily I was able to snatch .org and all the other ones. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, Alex, now you're looking at, at Bill Hurst on the right and yeah. Eline on the left. Okay, now this, what you're looking at over here, the highlighted part that I'm highlighting now, is essentially what will show in the search engine results. Not, not right. all of the pretty buttons down at the bottom here. Don't worry about all of that. Right. This is what, you, what you're focusing on here, okay? Now, yeah. in order to get that to look like, well, at least this, to look like what Elon's done there, uh -huh. you need to have, can you see there, a verified Google author profile. I'm going over a bit here on both sites. Okay. It's verified linked author profile, Google profile. So his Google profile has been linked, which is what I should put in the sidebar here for you. Whereas on your site or on Bill's site, it's not linked. It's so they'll, ne they'll never be able to give Bill that that um, rich snippet because it's not there to recognize it. 
Okay. Well, like you said, Andre, it's linked, but it's linked to the ABVO or whatever the the you know. Yeah, sure. So yeah. it's linked. To that. You can have multiple author profiles, but if you want your Google rich snippets to work, you're going to need to have your Google profile in there. Two, you can now link your Twitter is profile. Your business page or your personal My Google personal Plus. Page is suspended. Personal. Uh, personal. Personal. Your your business page is registered as a publisher, not as a um, right as a, as a author. Only author snippets will display, Alexander. This okay. is this yeah, is about right. connecting to a real human being. Google is trying to make sure that if you say you're Mike Eline, right. that you're a real human and not just some entity. Right. Sorry. Does that make sense, Alex? What about the contributor section of the, the About uh, tab on the Correct. profile? Doesn't that have to contain? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's your second step. On your, on your profile, um, let's go... Um, that's how I do it. Yeah, now you have to put it in there. Yeah, yeah. that's the other piece of the connection. That's what Bridges yeah. did do. Yeah, to prove that it's you, Alex, Alexander, to prove that it really is a person, you actually have to include the link back to your About Us page on your blog on your Google pro profile. But it has to be the contributor, not the other links or the other profile. Yeah. I screwed that up five times before I figured it out. If you have a look over here, let me zoom in there. Michael's got Personal Injury Lawyer, which goes to his Elon Law. A contri contrib contributor to. That's what makes his Google profile as being verified and confirmed. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you so need to put that. Profile. They're reciprocal to each other. They're reciprocal to each other. Yeah. Exactly. That's how they confirm it. There's a number of ways you can confirm it. You can confirm it like that, or you can do it by email, but that's the easiest, quickest, and cleanest. Okay. This be videotaped so we can reply it. Hey, we're videotaping this, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. And we want to reply it. Why? We're gonna we're just gonna watch the video again. Okay. Any other questions? No. Show these guys how to put an H card in a widget so they can at least learn how to use widgets. That's a, that's a, that's a difficult one, Mike, because everybody's site is different from, in terms of their widgets. So, it's, uh, you know, if I, show, if I show you, your site is completely different as compared to somebody else's site. You know what I mean? Yeah, but at least I mean, they if can... I, Get a basic idea of you know what a widget is and, and how to populate a text box within a widget and stuff. Well, yeah, and here's the thing, Andre. Even if they do it, you know, you Andre can show you guys where the widget section is and how it works. Just know that if you add a widget to your site, it may screw up your design or make things look weird, and you can pull it right back out and resave. Yeah. Don't drop it in and leave it and not take a look and make sure everything's <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I'm just trying to encourage everybody to do a little bit of their own testing so they can become more familiar with WordPress. It may be different, you may have a hard coded site where it doesn't even show up, but most of us with default WordPress blogs can very easily, you know, log into the dashboard, look at the widget. We may want to correct a typo, we may want to put an H card in our widget. Um, because we're not comfortable using schema creator yet or whatever. Um, so it's, you know, or whatever, but it's, it's pretty basic. Yeah. And it's just something I wanted to, so you guys aren't so scared of your blogs, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I think even, Mike, as you say, it just gives you so much more control because it might, you might win a, a huge case that you want to publish on your site immediately on a Friday afternoon or a Friday evening and your developer's not available or your program is not available. So you can actually just go into your site and say, um, Bill Hurst wins $10 million jury verdict for car accident in Indianapolis type thing. You know, so it's, it's, it's on your site, which you can do by means of widgets or by posts or whatever. But I mean, you know, if you want to just add that onto the sidebar, it's, it's totally doable. So the sidebar where it says header right, that's where the widgets are, right, Andre? No, that's correct. We 
let me just run through it here. Um, I don't think I'm going to use your site as an example, Mike, because <laughs> I really don't want to stuff something up there. So let's go back to um, let's go into the admin. <clears throat> okay. Now, what you would do is you've logged into your logged into your dashboard on on WordPress. You go to appearance and you go to widgets. Click on your widgets, and that gives you basically depending on what your theme is. I, I, as everyone knows, I'm a Genesis nut. I always I do everything in Genesis. They've got a header right, so in this instance, it would be. Um, so, yeah, there you go. It would be this this area here, header right. Uh, primary sidebar, depending on how your how your theme is set up, that is my primary sidebar here. Okay, that I must take out because I haven't activated short codes in my theme, but don't worry about that. Uh, and so what you just opened is the code, right? That's what the code looks like that's appearing in the sidebar. Yeah, but I don't want to confuse it. So let's let's rather look at a plain uh, text example. Okay, like you would be, you just add some text into the sidebar. So I would go here on the left hand side here, you've got all the options that you can do. You can put recent comments, you can put an RSS feed, um, you can put text is normally the best because you've got the most control over it. So let's put the text here. You just drag and drop. Can you see it's just, I click down on it and I drop it. Now I've got a new little text box at the top of my primary sidebar. So now I'm going to type in the title here, um, announcement. And you can put HTML code in that box like an H card, correct? Yes, but, but not in your title. Right. Now, there is, an issue, there is an issue with titles. Um, the title becomes, in, a, in many themes, it becomes a header. So you may not want to necessarily use that. You see the, the, the services here actually has become an H4. It's an H4. So I know on my theme, all of my my um, my sidebar titles are H4s. Now, there's a danger with that in that you can dilute keyword density across your site and focus because of those, because they site-wide. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. So I can either choose to put the announcement there, or I can just Rather just make it strong because I don't want to, I don't want to be competing with the word announcement on my site anyway. Sorry, this is a little, this is perhaps a little technical, but just that you are aware of it. Um, so now I'm putting in HTML code that says announcement, so it's going to be bold. It's not going to be a header, and then I can put in whatever HTML code I want to here. Uh, you know, italics or. Um, That's a great tip. Michael, yeah. Michael Andre, can, I, can I interrupt it for a second here? Sure. Uh, what, what Andre's showing you guys is he's adding some basic HTML elements. Now, he doesn't have to add these. He could just no. put text and it would show up. But he's mm -hmm. adding some basic formatting. A little trick is you can go to Word, you can go create a post or a page. Don't publish it or anything but use the WYSIWYG to create your HTML. Like if you yeah. want to have an H2 or whatever, then you can just go to the HTML view in that post, copy all that, and dump it right into this text widget, and it'll work the same. Correct. So yeah, I agree. That's, that's what we did just now with the schema creator, is that we went into the post, we created the schema, and then we took that out, and we just put it onto a, onto a text uh, document or a notepad document as a swap file, for the lack of a better term, that we could just copy and paste into there. Yes. OK, yes. so this is, like I said, this might be a little bit technical, but I'm just showing you a different, uh, a, a few examples or whatever. Let's um, let's put a link in here, uh, href. Um, let's go call to um, Plus four two one nine one seven four three four one four six, and put here uh, call me. Okay, so you can see here there's okay that I've taken up, but there's that's the top one. Andre van Wyk is a registered business. Let's just refresh that quickly. Take this away. Um, 
okay that's my that's my top part of my sidebar my primary sidebar okay now once I press save here that's gonna be in addition to what I what I what I had there so let's refresh here there we go you see now I did the announcement I did Michael Elon in the italics I did Michael Elon as an H1 and then I put in a a contact, you know, call me function that somebody can press and it'll phone me. That's freaking killer, man. Isn't that awesome, guys, how easy that is? Yeah. But it's, well, you, you have know, to have, Andre, you have to have this, uh, your site built in Genesis, essentially, to use this, correct? No, oh. no. No? But Jonathan, uh, Jonathan you, unfortunately, you can't even look at any of this because you don't have any sidebars and you don't have... Um, you don't have a drag and drop interface like this. Gotcha. Do you not? But you will. We're gonna get you set up, man. Yeah, no, we'll we'll get there. But um, you know, you don't fix anything that isn't broken. That's my uh, that's my philosophy. I mean, there's no there's no point to it. Well, he but, wants some new mini. He we need some new mini blogs. So we'll do it on those. Yeah, yeah we'll do it. Do it moving forward. Can I, I use need, I need another? I need another twenty sites. Come on, some <laughs> micro sites. Yeah. Uh, you need one one well built, well functioning site. You don't need. One. No, I need I need twenty or thirty. I mean, <laughs> targeted yeah, Jonathan, sites, targeted Jonathan, practice. Jonathan's hyperactive. He needs twenty sites because he's got to stay busy. He's all over the place. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to end the video portion of this. Right. But I'm going to need everything up.